Mimma razakna hum yunfiqoon means as long as Allah has given to you, you spend. That's why a lot of us, we beat our heads praying and we fasting and we're doing everything and you want to know why you're not getting? Because you're too cheap. When you have it, you must use it. Make intention money for Allah in the part of Allah. And Allah will put barakat in your money so your money could be used in the part of Allah. Allahu 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 Allah Allahu 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 Allah Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَا يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَا يُضْلِلْهُ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدَهُ وَرَسُولُهُ اللَّهُمَّ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْلِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةَ مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي اللهم ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربي يسر ولا تعسر وتم من بالخير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم صدق الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد الحمد لله all praises and thanks are due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Jum'ah, the Friday Congregational Prayer, and uh, to listen to the Khutbah. We say Alhamdulillah, all praises and thanks are due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for choosing us to belong to the Ummah or the followers of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to shower His peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'een and upon his family members and his companions insha'Allah. We also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon each and every one of us, to shower his guidance upon us, to shower his forgiveness upon us and to shower his acceptance upon us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to be able to deliver this khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help, <clears throat> for his forgiveness. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower unto me the quality of tawakkal ala Allah, the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the ability to be able to fulfill this responsibility, inshaAllah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. Today, my brothers and sisters, happens to be the 20th day of fasting. <clears throat> I ask you to please bear with me my throat. I've been going through this for the past week, but inshallah, mashallah. I suppose you could still hear, right? All right. <clears throat> Tonight will make us the 21st night. 
of Ramadan. And that definitely tells us that the Hadith, the Prophet وسلم, has taught us, reminded us, instructed us to seek the night of power in the odd nights of the last 10 nights. So tonight is the 21st night, then you have the 23rd night, the 25th night, the 27th night, <coughs> and the 29th night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in chapter 97 tells us emphatically, very clearly, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna anzalna hu fi laylatil qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr khairum min alfi shahr. Allah says, We have indeed revealed in the night of power the Quran. And what explains what is the night of power? Laylatul Qadr khairum min alfi shahr. The night of power is better than 1,000 months. What does that mean? It means that if you are praying in the night of power, we get the blessings of prayer, ibadah, worship, dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah, whatever. We get the blessings as though we have done that for 83 years and 4 months, which is, which is what 1,000 months is equal to. And khair, better than, does not mean 83 years and 4 months. What does it mean? More than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only used the figure of 1,000 months. Why? Because in those days, people used to use, the, you know, like how we use something nowadays. We say, I'm going the nine yards. What does that mean? Three feet? It doesn't mean three feet. Nine yards is three feet, if you know your mathematics. Nine yards, when we say, I'm going the nine yards, that can mean anything in whatever we're doing. I'm going to get married, I'm going to do the wedding, nine yards, everything. I'm doing the funeral, I want to do everything that I need to do for the funeral, the janazah. I'm going to hajj, I want to get the nine yards, everything. It means you don't want to cut short anything. So it's a terminology that we use, nine yards, to represent the nine yards. The max in whatever we're doing. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ الشَّهْرِ When Allah says that the night of power is better than 1,000 months, it is like a nine yards terminology. Better than that. More than that. That's just only a figure that is used to tell us how much Allah is, wants to explain the power of the night of power that we get more blessings than if we stand in prayer for 83 years and four months. <coughs> so tonight, as the Prophet Sallallahu told Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and all the companions, that you should seek this night of power and the odd nights of the last 10 nights. And that's why in addition to the Tarawi Salah, we are recommended to do extra nafil prayer Read Quran, do ibadah, do whatever. Not only stand in salah, but standing in salah is one of the most powerful thing in Ramadan because you get the blessings of a nafil salah, nafil prayer, as though you are praying a fard prayer. Read Quran, give charity, whatever it takes to get blessings. And if you seek it in the nights, then definitely one of the nights is going to be the night of power, inshallah. That's why we have to search it. And I always tell everybody that every year a lot of people come only on the 27th night thinking that it is just so easy that the night of power is on the 27th night. No. Nobody knows when. It's not that cheap and easy to get. You got to seek it. Talab karna. You understand? <coughs> now, on another point, hence you have a lot of brothers who do etikaf. Last night I mentioned a little thing about a few points on that. Etikaf, they come for seclusion because it's a sunnah of the Prophet 
Some of the fuqaha have said it is sunnat muakkadah that somebody must do it. It is almost. It is almost to a point where some of the fuqaha have said that if in a masjid there is no one who does etikaf, then the entire community carries the sin. And if one person stays in the masjid and does etikaf, you save the whole jamaat from that responsibility. So deep it is. Because the Prophet wasallam did it, did it, did it every year. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of brothers who do it every year. I was mentioning last night, and I want to share those things now, as today marks that, or we commence that night of, that odd night tonight. Those of us who cannot spend the full 10 days and 10 nights in Ertikaf, in seclusion in the masjid, at least you can come in the night, remain after Tarawih Salah, make Ibadah, of course, you can do it home in your own room and, and, and seclusion, but sometimes instead of doing ibadah, you might be playing with your phone, you might be playing with your kids, you might even be playing with your wife, you might be playing with this and that that you should not be playing with in this night. But if you come in the masjid, you'll be sitting and doing ibadah, dhikr, everyone reading Quran, everyone praying, so you will be in that spirit and motivation to do that. And if we seek it in the nights, then inshallah, you might just be that lucky person to get it on that night, inshallah. So it doesn't mean that if you can't come for the full 10 nights and 10 days in the masjid, you can't go only in the nights. If that's the ability that Allah has given to you, that's the time that you have, that's the only availability that we have, then make use of it. <coughs> inshallah, make use of it. I wanted to share again another point that I announced last night. The Sakat will fit this year. We recommend it's $9. It's calculated based on pounds and kilos of wheat, etc. And that is something you need to give before Eid. It is better you give it now in Ramadan so you save yourself from it not carrying the fadail and the virtues of Zakat al fit, which should be given before Eid. Eid al fit Salah or Sarkat al fit You give it in Ramadan, you get more blessings. And today is our second to last Juma for the month. Next week, Friday, will be the last Juma in the month of Ramadan. <coughs> so I'm just trying to remind myself and remind you, brothers and sisters, of some of the things we need to get going with in the next few days or beginning from today, inshallah. Three weeks ago, I reminded myself and you on the importance of fasting. And two weeks ago, we spoke about the fadail and virtues of the month of Ramadan and doing good deeds in the month of Ramadan. You will remember that. I think we got the CD outside where it says that you should use Ramadan like a spiritual gym where you energize yourself spiritually and we become better Muslims in this month. I don't want to get into that topic again because we already spoke on fast. We spoke on fasting and Ramadan. Today in the second khutbah, inshallah, we want to touch a little bit on another topic that is very important in the month of Ramadan. I know this is going to offend a lot of you. See, if you don't want to listen to it, you could probably get up and go. And I know you wouldn't go anywhere. This is serious. This is serious. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was known to be a very kind and generous person throughout his lifetime. He never said no to anybody. He never refused anybody anything. It didn't matter who it was. Even if a man threatened to kill him and the man came and asked for help, he will help him. He was so generous that it is mentioned in Bukhari and Tirmidhi and all the hadith that when it came to Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ was even more generous. His generosity was faster than even the wind. You know, the wind blows. His generosity was even faster than that. 
And I want to discuss that a little bit with myself and you. That's why I said a lot of you are going to feel very offended. Because we like to read Quran, we like to pray, but when it comes to spending, we are a bunch of misers, cheap, and do not understand the sin, the sin that goes with not spending. What am I saying? One thing is to get blessings if you spend. One thing is to get sin if you don't spend. And this is Ramadan. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu has encouraged us to be very generous in Ramadan. So that that generosity and kindness inside of us, we could inculcate that quality and initiate that spirituality, softness of heart and kindness of heart to give and become a person of giving throughout our life and throughout the year. In the second khutbah, I want to touch on that a little bit, inshallah. But before we go into the second khutbah, I want to welcome our friend here, Rabbi Barry Silva, a former Florida State Representative. He's with us in the audience. <coughs> and we have asked Brother Zad to let him speak for 10 minutes after the Salah, the salah inshallah, because we have a lot of problems going on all over the world. You hear the shutdown of Malaysian airline yesterday. You have all the violence in, in Israel, with the Palestinians and Israelites and whatever is going on. Wallahu alam. We need to pray for peace. At least we who live here should unite and have some peace and love. So we have the rabbi here with us after um, rabbi. Some of these Muslims, they're very deadly, eh? but don't worry, you're in a good place here. Don't worry, these are good Muslims. <laughs> inshallah. They're calm. They're intelligent people around here, inshallah. That's why we have you as a guest. Don't get scared, rabbi, please. Uh, last time, rabbi invited me to his synagogue in Boca Raton. One rabbi was sitting next to me. The rabbi said, I was so scared to sit next to you. I never sat next to a Muslim. I thought the Muslim next to me would kill me. Do you remember that? He said it was the first time he sat next to a Muslim. He didn't know it was so cool to sit next to a Muslim. I said, you wouldn't even know. Oh. I met a, a woman rabbi a couple weeks ago when I went to do the, the lecture with President Clinton. I said, you know, it would be so nice to see a sheikh date a rabbi. I could date you, man. I didn't mean anything haram, eh? It's going to carry out for lunch, sit in a restaurant, a sheikh and a rabbi talking. Just to show the fraternity, you guys thinking bad. You mustn't think bad. When you talk about date, you keep on thinking something haram. You could have an appointment, a date. That's another way for an engagement, an appointment, a meeting, or a date. See, you're all thinking concocted. Eh? Anyhow, in the second khutbah, inshallah, <clears throat> not because my voice is so I can't make a joke, right? You can still... In the second khutbah, inshallah, I want to remind myself and remind you about uh, the importance of spending, not only in Ramadan, but in Islam, and what Allah says about that, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah without reckoning, inshallah. وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوقل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Once more we thank Allah subhanahu wa taala for blessing us to be here today to perform the Salat al Jum'ah and to listen to the khutbah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to shower His peace and blessings onto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to shower his mercy, his forgiveness, his acceptance, his guidance upon each and every one of us. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, his mercy upon me by giving me the permission and the ability to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his rahmah, to shower his mercy upon me. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower the quality of tawakkal, Allah the trust in Allah, 
the taqwa, the piety, the iman, the faith, the hikmah, the wisdom, the ilm, the knowledge, and the, <clears throat> the ability and permission to continue with the second khutbah, inshallah. I put my tawakkal, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most sufficient. I really wish my voice was better to speak on this topic today. But fortunately or unfortunately, that's how it is. <laughs> Islam, my brothers and sisters, now that we're in Ramadan and we're fasting and we're praying Salah and we're reading Quran, I want to remind you and myself that that's not all in Islam. Do you believe that? If that was everything in Islam, why do we have a third pillar? You have Iman, Salah, Fasting, Hajj. What is the third pillar? Zakat. That's a pillar of Islam. The Prophet says, Iman is like a house that got four pillars. Salah. You know, take this as a house. Salah. Zakat. Fasting and Hajj. If you don't pay your zakat, what happens? Your house is falling down. That's what the Prophet says. Your iman, the iman, your faith is like the house. Your iman is falling down. I don't want you guys to feel guilty. That's why I said a lot of you will feel guilty. Don't hate me for it. Go change the verses in the Quran and change the hadith. Don't hate me for it. The Prophet wasallam said, your house will be slanted as though it's fallen down, meaning your iman is falling down. Because he said that iman is like the house kept up by four pillars. That's point one. Everything, everything we do, practically, basically speaking, has the concept of spending. You know that? Beside Iman. It, at least it takes Iman to spend. Anyhow, everything in the five pillars takes spending. It takes Iman to spend. To have the heart to spend in the part of Allah. If you check Salah, how do you pray in a masjid? Does a masjid just fall? The Prophet says that person who builds a masjid for Allah, Allah builds a home for him in Jannah. How do you build a masjid? You got to spend. See? The pillar of zakat, you got to spend charity. And Allah says, well, mimma razakna hum yunfikun. I want all you brothers and sisters and myself to understand. Spending is not only for the rich. Spending is not only for the wealthy. You don't have to be a millionaire to spend. If you're a millionaire, you spend more. But you don't have to be a millionaire to spend. means As long as Allah has given to you, you spend from what Allah has given to you. Allah says, spend out of what I have given to you. And brother, I mean, mashallah. Fasting. When you finish fasting the day, how do you break fast? Don't you have to spend to buy food, to eat? Sometimes the kind of money people spend in an iftar, that's why I don't support it. I really don't. Eh? I tell you my opinion in today's time. I support feeding a poor man. That's why I don't go to public iftars. I support feeding a poor man, a needy man. Then you're feeding rich people with $30,000 a month, and you have poor people don't even have food in their house to eat in your community. Doesn't make sense. That's not what the Prophet meant by iftar. Feed a poor, needy person. That's why when you don't fast and you miss your fast, and you're sick, and you have a problem, we are commanded not to feed of 200 healthy people who are just lazy to cook. Husband and wife go to work, no time to cook iftar, so it's easy to go to the masjid and eat for free. It's easy to spend five... I see, brother, I mean shaking his head, isn't that true? Yeah. 
It's easy to spend a thousand dollars in a masjid and do iftar because it's hard to cook, especially nowadays. Women don't like to cook and men also can't even cook. A lot of men know to cook because their wives have taught them to cook. They don't have a choice. But it, when it comes to even fasting, you got to spend at home, do iftar, do the right thing, eat, whether it's for your family or whoever it is. But remember, feeding a poor person, a needy person, that's where the blessings is. Not a big show business that it's a masjid thing. Some masjids only exist on iftar. That's the only time you know they exist. People come together. Some people, that's the only activity they could do. Mashallah, it's good, so don't get me wrong. It's a good service, it's a good community service. But when you check $1,000 to do an iftar, $30,000 at the end of the month, you could have saved a brother from losing his house, losing his car, losing his wife, losing his children, losing himself. Because that's what the charity and the satkan, the zakat is all about. So let's don't get confused with this American style business. Monkey see, monkey do, everybody doing it, so it's a good thing. I support the idea you pay the poor, you help the poor, you help the needy, you give the full zakat before you feed a bunch of rich people. That's the law. And I'm not afraid to say that. That's the law. Do the big iftars, but make sure you feed the poor. That's what zakat is all about. That's why zakat will fit. Why do you give zakat will fit at the end of the month of Ramadan? One of the blessings that the Prophet says, he says that your fast is hanging in the air. It's hanging in the air. And when you pay the zakat will fit or the zakat will fit, you allow your fast to go up. Whom do you give the zakat will fit to, my brothers and sisters? Whom do you give it to me? You give it to Brother Azad? Whom do you give it to? The poor and the needy. So your fast could go up. Come on, which Islam do we study? Huh? I know a lot of people won't like that. That's why we're a little different here. Hajj, the fifth pillar. Could you go to Hajj without wealth? You've got to have the means to go to Hajj. The health and the wealth. So spending is an important thing in the Muslim life. <coughs> you get married, you've got to do walima, you've got to spend. You have a child, you've got to do akika, you've got to spend. Everything takes a cost. Islam has recommend. You're going to do idol fit, you've got to give zakat. Sadqat will fit. You're going to do idol adha, you've got to share the meat in one third to the poor. You see how you spend? Everything in Islam, your prayer, your happiness, everything is around spending. That's why I wanted to share with you that this is the month of Ramadan. And I want to read a verse for you and myself from Surah, <coughs> Surah al fatid chapter 35 of the Quran, verse number 29. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in this verse? Subhanallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman. Inna al-ladhina yatluna kitab Allah. Those who recite the Quran. Wa aqamu salah And those who pray salah. You hear the two categories? Read Quran, tarawih, salah, Ramadan. Wa aqamu salah. Praying salah, tarawih, five times salah. Mashallah. وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ And they also give out of what we have given to them. Allah is not only saying the wealthy must give. Those, whether you're a taxi driver, whether you have a Dunkin' Donut shop, well, Dunkin' Donut people are rich people anyhow. Whatever you have, a chai wala, pan wala, you're selling pan or you're selling tea, as long as you have and you make, Allah says, you don't only read Quran and pray Salah. In addition to that, those who spend out of what we have given to them, Sirra, secretly, or publicly, they, their business will never perish. They will be successful in their business. This is a business. Let them know this they will have hope for a tijara. In Arabic, the word tijara, you know, when a man is a merchant, you call him a tajir. 
They will be in a very successful business. Let it be known that their meaning, their business, their life will be one of success. That's why a lot of us, we beat our heads praying and we fasting and we doing everything. And you want to know why you're not getting? Because you're too cheap. Urdu me kya kehte hai? Kanjus. Cheap misers. This is a deadly topic, my brothers and sisters. That's why the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep on telling us. Jesus kept on telling his people, pray and give charity. Allah commanded Jesus with prayer and charity. Together with prayer, you must give charity. Together with prayer, you must give charity. This is, you know, it is really, and I want to remind you and myself in Ramadan. I was saying last night, you know, sometimes I feel ashamed. That I have to every month of every Ramadan get up and beg for money. Sometimes I feel ashamed, Brother Azad has to ask you to put money. I wish we had another two Brother Azad here or three. The three of them alone could run Darululum financially and we don't beg nobody. I just came back from a trip. Last week, Friday, I was doing Juma Khutbah in Ohio. The Muslims bought out a cinema, big building, not a small one, massive, in the center of their little town. Beautiful. What I have observed, we went to Alabama. I was telling you brothers last night. It's the first time I led Tarawi in about 20 years in Alabama. That's why I lost my throat today. <clears throat> it kicked off from that night. One brother, one brother saw the need for a little masjid. You know what he did? He opened a little, he had a shop, a shop. He closed down his shop. He converted it to a masjid. He bought a next bay. You know how the bay is in the plaza? He bought a next section, opened a shop there, and opened his business, his masjid. His business as the masjid. He turned it into a masjid. Go check it out, Masjid Noor, in Dikata, Danville Road. Yes, I just came from that. Then I wish I could tell Brother Azad, you got six halfies, now you guys run Darululum, let me go for Sabilila. I fed up begging people for money to run a Darululum and, and teach the halfies. A lot of people enjoy listening to these halfies read every night, don't you? But ask Brother Azad how much you have to beg them for money to pay for the hafiz. Isn't that true, Brother Azad? All day you have to be begging people, pay your pledge, pay your pledge, pay your pledge, donate. Parents, could you pay for your kids to eat so they could learn to read Quran? But all of you 500 people, 1,000 people, enjoy them reading, huh? Yeah, hafiz, man. Everybody start. Allah Akbar. Everybody want to tell the hafiz how to read. Read slow, read fast, read this, read that. But you can't put a dollar in the box to help them study Islam. That's why I wish my voice was better today. I get goosebumps when I went on this trip and came back. Huh? You want to hear the six, ten half is? Read. But we got to beg you every Ramadan to help pay the Hufas to teach them to live here to study Islam. Come on. I've just come from this trip here. One brother, his business alone maintains the masjid. So people could read and pray. I didn't read that in a book. We went to break fast, me and Brother Wahid and Brother Andy, in a masjid. Well, in Madrasa. Madrasa Hassanain. A madrasa run by Maulana Tariq Jamil from Faisalabad in Pakistan. Do you know? One brother bought a house for the students to live in so they could study in the masjid. Another brother alone bought a house. I asked him, how much for the house? Brother Wahid, how much did he say? $200,000. Let me tell you something else. I would do respect to Brother Zad and everybody. When we started Darululum, I took five men to buy a house next door. All five men refused. They didn't have the vision I had. It was $85,000 to buy the house next door. Eighty-five. dollars You could have walked in there. My vision was Darululum. Students will live there. The teachers will live there and they will study here. I went to Indianapolis to see my dream. Five men refused. And I know one of them alone could have bought it. Vision. Or were we scared? Money. I just went to Indianapolis. Go right now, you see it. Two brothers alone bought two houses. And Allah is so great to them. The masjid is even giving them back the money for it. They didn't want it. The students are living there. The parents paying them. As a rent, it becomes an income. The owner who bought it, he will get back his money. But he has no fear. It's a trust in Allah. If the students don't come, Allah gives him Jannah, inshallah. You see the iman? Come on, come on. What is wrong with us? Subhanallah. That's why 
If Allah has blessed us, you don't need to pass a box to collect $100,000 to buy a, to teach the Hafiz, to buy a house for students to live. And that's a dream I still have. I'm going to do that here in South Florida. I'm going to get a few generous brothers, and I know there are generous brothers here, who will or alone buy a house in the back, because when you get 10 people to buy it, you get 10 bunch of confusion. If husband and wife can't live in a house, how are you going to have five men owning a house? Husband and wife nowadays can't own a house. They fight every day. Who's going to have it and who wouldn't get to have it? Everybody wants to divorce each other so they could share the house. You put five men there, I might have to settle a murder crime. I'm sure, brother, if I'm in real estate, look for one first, behind the Arlulu. We will get a religious brother, a brother of Iman, not money. Iman and money. Who could say, I am the man, I man, I am a N, meaning Iman. Buy the house, put some students to live so they could study full time. We will get brothers to do it. You know what was interesting when I was in Alabama, and I need to share this with you? And I want to say that Allah bless our brothers here who sponsor. We have a few brothers who sponsor CDs. People put a dollar in the box, they put $10, $20, they donate towards Quran. We have a few brothers, they donate towards Quran. I have two witnesses, brother Andy and brother Wahid. When we were in Alabama, a white guy walked in, American white guy. And the Imam introduced us to him. He said, um, Oh, you guys in Florida? We said, Yes. He says, How come nobody in Florida could have come and give me a Quran? Nobody in Florida? I said, Where you lived in Florida? He said, Right in Davie. He said, What? In my backyard? Darlum's backyard? He said, But not a Muslim in Florida looked for me came to give the dawah, or found me and gave me a Quran. I came all the way in Alabama to get a Quran to convert to Muslim. The good thing is when I saw the Quran, though, when I went in the shelves in the masjid, the Quran was Al-Hikmat Quran that you brothers donated. Allahu Akbar. See how good it, that motivated my iman. I have two witnesses right here. The brother was angry. Why no Muslim in South Florida could have given me a Quran? And then he said, but I must tell you, though, there's one guy down in Hollywood. I listen to his CDs all the time. I said, interesting. Who's the guy? And he said, Sheikh Shafiad. And then the imam said, you're talking to the man there himself. He's like, oh, brother, my wife loves to hear speeches. I'm motivated. I'm still laughing. You know what? You few brothers who donate to those Quran and those CDs at al Hikmat table, it has reached Alabama and converted a white American boy. I have two witnesses. He just told me that on the trip. So you wouldn't know you put a dollar where it reaches. The man didn't accept here in Davy. Allah took him to Alabama. Where he accepted Islam from a Quran that you donate here. Because the Qurans, we all put al-hikmat on it. See the barakat? I know time doesn't permit me, my brothers and sisters. But what I'm saying is that don't wait for somebody else to put. Don't wait for somebody else to donate. If you could sponsor a half a student alone, if you could sponsor a thousand Quran alone, you know, it's always a shame I have to be begging people, donate towards the Dawah, donate to the Quran, donate to the Darud book, donate to the genealogy, donate to the Hiv students. Why do we have to beg? That's not in Islam. The Prophet wasallam didn't have to beg his Sahabas. He only have to say, we need money to do so and so. And they came running with it. Wasn't that it? Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala, who come in. Sahabas used to compete. Who could give more in the part of Allah? Today, our men compete. Who could give less in the part of Allah? You know, I went to a college. That was one of the trip. But two main things was on this road trip through Georgia and Alabama and Kentucky and Tennessee up to Ohio and Pennsylvania and upstate New York next to the Hudson River. I had a meeting with the principal of UTS, the Unification Theological Seminary, also known as Barrytown Interfaith College. Very interesting. Do you know that's a Christian college? You know where they got money to, buy, to set it up? One man bought it. One Christian man. And today, sometimes I hear Muslims boast of how much millions they have. I always tell you one good thing they don't do. They don't boast in front of me. Because they're scared if they boast in front of me, I'm going to ask them for money for dawah. So very smart Muslims, they don't ever talk how much money they have in front of me. They got she going to ask you for money for dawah. Lulu, man, al hikmat and Quran. Don't say you have in front of him. Always cry when you meet him. Business bad, no money to advertise, things going, business gone through, life gone through, wife gone through, everything gone through. 
You know, it's a, you know, I'll tell you something. A lot of people say, I have a little bit of money that I'm saving for sickness and trouble. What do they say? For sickness and trouble. You think, think what happens. Their intention, they make the bad intention. You make intention to have money for sickness and trouble? Why must you think so negative? Why don't you make intention for have money for Allah in the part of Allah and for Dawah and Deen? That's why your money could only be used for sickness and trouble. Do you get what I said? If you make intention to have money for sickness and trouble, your money will be for sickness and trouble. Innama al-a'malu bin niyat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in the first hadith in Bukhari, whatever you make intention for, that is what it's going to be. A lot of us make intention, keep money, hoard money, keep money for trouble. That's why the money will only be used for trouble. Sometimes you're settling court matters only. All your hundred of thousand going. Make the intention of life, you give me money, I'll be able to spend in your part. In the deen of Allah, in the part of Allah. And when you spend for Allah, Allah will give you back in this world. Darululum didn't sponsor my trip to New York. You know what I also did? I had a choice to rent a car, go with the Lexus. I said, regularly Muslims park the Lexus and they drive a cheap car on the road. I will go with the best car in the part of Allah. We drove the Lexus from home today. I didn't care about the miles. Why must I go in the part of Allah in a cheap old car? And when I want to drive around the wife and family and a few big short friends, I'm using the Mercedes and the Lexus to show off. Show off in the part of Allah. For had this, go check what Zuha wa Layli Sajja. When you have it, you must use it. When you have it, you must use it. Don't hide your Lexus and your good car and your money and put it away. Spend it in the part of Allah. That's when Allah gives us. A lot of us are only saving money. You're saving money for only children. Well, only children will benefit from it. You're saving money for trouble. Well, only when you have trouble, you will use it. Make intention money for Allah in the part of Allah to donate to schools, to massage it, to dawah, to deen. And Allah will put barakat in your money so your money could be used in the part of Allah. That's what we need to do. This is Ramadan. That's why I love a lot of us, our money is only absorbed in trouble and sickness. Because that's the intention we make. And don't tell me no. I hear everybody say it. I wish I could tell them when they tell me, Are to Our intention is corrupted. Make the intention that whatever you have, whatever you make, is for Allah. Allah will put barakat in what you have. He will make you spend it in what you have. And he will make it go. Don't watch me have a Lexus park up there. Three years, I changed three Lexuses. I went all over America with it. And not like some of our Muslims. I have Muslim brothers here. When I tell them I'm going in the part of Allah, they pack their Mercedes and Lexus and ask me, how are we going? I speak very openly, you know. I don't care who killed me, you know. They ask me, how are we going? And I dare not tell them we're going with your Lexus or your Mercedes. Because they're going to die. So I say, come with me. Allah has given me that and I take that for Allah. I made the intention to drive a good vehicle for the sake of Allah. I'm only saying that because I want those of you who have a dollar, have a good car, have something, use it for Allah. Don't hoard it. Because you will hoard it and your son-in-law will use it. If not, you die and your wife will marry and another man use it. I didn't say that. Eh? The Prophet Sallallahu said that. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala who said that. He told the dwellers of the grave. He said, you have gone. But your wives have remarried. Your wealth has been distributed. Your children have become orphans. That's what's going to happen to us. The car and the money that we hoard, the wives will remarry and another man will use it. When you could have been using it in the part of Allah, and the angels would be with you enjoying it. Don't be stupid, my brothers and sisters. This is Ramadan. Don't only see what the verse talks about. Spending in the part of Allah publicly. Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 29. Spend. Wa anfaku mimma razakna hum sirra wa ala niya. Spend publicly, spend secretly. Allah doesn't have a problem with that. A lot of people make excuse. I spend secretly. I don't want to do it publicly. Allah says clearly, you can do it publicly, you can do it secretly. And I don't need to go into all the details in the areas. You know, alhamdulillah, I was so happy and I feel so happy. That Brother Zad could be here. I know he puts his hands in his pocket a lot of times. But we could have six hafiz, could lead Salah in Ramadan, that I could have been free to just go in the part of Allah. I wish I could continue doing that. It is so much of peace. I learned so much. When I went to this college, one man called Reverend Moon from Korea bought this college with his own money. 
He didn't pass a box and he didn't ask nobody. Actually, they're organizing for me to come and do some interfaith lectures and to do some lectures in Islam. Interesting. You know who is a chaplain of that college? Brother Wahid, who it was? A Muslim that converted to Christianity is a chaplain of the college. Because all of us are a bunch of sleepers here. Sabto sone wala hai. A Muslim who is converted to Christianity is a chaplain of the college. I said, brother, good combination. I was a Christian, convert to Islam, I will both make a bond. You from Christ Islam to Christianity, me from Christianity to Islam, we will do interfaith in this college, inshallah. I'm a very positive thing. I look at the positive line. Here is a good bond, and he admired that very much. He realized he wasn't talking totally to a fool. Probably looked like a fool, but not totally a fool. Brothers and sisters, in conclusion, I want to share a verse with you and all of us who have, Allah blessed us, not just the wealthy ones. I said those who are wealthy should spend more. Remember, the Prophet says, those who are generous, they're min Allah wa qareeb min al-jannah. They are close to Allah and they are close to paradise. And those who are misers, bakhil, they're far from Allah and they're far from Jannah. Ba'id min al-jannah. Far from Allah, far from Jannah. And I want to share this with you as we conclude the khutbah. Remember, if Allah has given us, Allah has given you. Don't wait for others to do and others to give. You give. What Allah has given to you, spend it. Whether it means to dawah Quran, salah book, sponsor hafiz, feast of bilila, whatever. Because there is a verse in the Quran that I really need to share with you before I conclude. It's a very deadly verse. But before telling you that verse, you know in the Bible, in Mark, Luke, and Matthew, there's a famous saying that Jesus said. He said that the rich will not enter paradise, the kingdom of God, as he said. The rich will not enter the kingdom of God until the camel passes through the eye of a needle. Until what? It's important the Hufas hear this. You know what is the eye of a needle? A very tiny little hole, a big camel got to pass through. The Jesus says, the rich will not enter paradise, the kingdom of God, until that camel could pass through that. So those of us who are rich, Allah give you money and you don't spend it, contemplate. And don't tell me Jesus said that. Hear what the Prophet Sallallahu said. He said that the poor will enter paradise 40 years before the rich. In another hadith, they have narrated in Tirmizi that the poor will enter Jannah 500 years before the rich. So don't just say Jesus said it. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. The poor man will enter paradise 500 years before the rich man. It's nothing to do with richer. Don't get scared, brother Azad. You brothers who have money, don't be scared. It's nothing about that. I know I only pawned on brother Azad because I could, he close to me here. I know he, he wouldn't put me out of Darlum. Because a few other brothers, you make a vote and say, get him out, brother. He only pinpoints me every Friday. I only use him as an example. What I'm saying is nothing about the rich. It's if you're rich and you spend in the part of Allah, you will be among the first to enter paradise. You see the point? In Islam, if you have money and you spend in the part of Allah, because the Prophet says there are two people who you should be jealous of. Whom? A man who has knowledge and spends it in the part of Allah. Spread it. And a man who has wealth and he spends it. The man with knowledge and he spread it. And the man with wealth and he spends it. Those are two people you are allowed to jealous. Wish that I had knowledge to spread it. Wish that I had wealth to spend it. Because if you spend it, if you spread it, you will be first up in Jannah. But if you don't spend the money that Allah has given to you, the camel will get through the eye of a needle. Everybody knows what is a needle? Tiny little thing, so. Some people can't even put a thread through the needle head. The camel will go through. And if you think that's hadith and it's za'if, and if you think that Jesus and he's not Muslim, and Auzubillah, I know how people think very crazy. Let me tell you the verse in the Quran, and actually, got six had a half is here. Surah Araf, chapter 7, ayah number 40. I don't have time to get into the whole ayah. Because time doesn't permit me. Surah Araf, take the CD after. Chapter 7, verse 40. Allah says, those who reject my signs. And Allah refers to, Bi ayatina, 
Those who reject my signs, the commands in the Quran, his commands, his injunctions, those who reject it, wastakbar, those wastakbaru, and those who are arrogant, those who are arrogant, those who reject my signs, and Allah goes down to say, they will not be able to enter into the gates of Jannah until the camel passes through the eye of a needle. Just as Jesus said, Allah also tells us in the Quran. Go check it out. A lot of people think that's only Bible. That's only Jesus. Go check the Quran, chapter 7, verse 40, where Allah says, if you don't obey his commands, if you don't spend if he gives you, if you don't do what he has commanded us to do, you will not enter paradise until a camel could go through the eye of a needle. That means a lot of time in hell. A lot of time in hell. I didn't want to be so harsh today. But you know what, my brothers and sisters? If we don't remind ourselves on the day of judgment, you will get up and say, Allah, Shafayat never told us that, you know. He was playing politics with Brother Azad. He didn't tell us. I don't care who it is. I tell him what I have to tell you, inshallah. I'm not playing no politics. No chairman, no secretary, nobody. What the Quran says, who the hat fits, you wear it. Right, Brother Irfan? Brother, we find a real estate. He might get us a house free and say, do that in the part of Allah. MashaAllah. And get Brother Azad to pay for it. Anyhow, I know you have a lot of Muslims, Brother. I mean, has two houses. Brother, this one, four or five houses. I don't want to expose you, but Allah will expose you on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, Allah will say, you had all these houses for dunya, for women, for show, to rent, to make money. What about my deen and my dawah? What are you going to tell Allah? What are we going to tell Allah? We talk about that next week if Allah give me better voice and more health, inshallah. Don't kill me before that. Eh? Some of you might shoot me before I come next week. No problem. I'll die in Ramadan, no matter. May Allah forgive us. May Allah guide us. And may Allah give us that hidayah. In addition to your Quran, and you read in Salah, chapter 40, chapter 35, verse 29, the verse that we read on spending in the part of Allah. Go study it. Take the CD after. And let's just spend so Allah could bless us, give us Jannah, and give us more, inshallah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Rahim, Ya Ghafur, Rahim. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah, we thank Thee, Allah, for all the favors and bounties You have bestowed upon us, Ya Allah. We ask Thee, Allah, to send Your peace and blessings unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, accept our Ramadan, accept our fast, accept our salah, accept our ibadah, Ya Allah. Soften our hearts and give us the iman, the taqwa. The taqwa, Ya Allah, the piety and the trust in you to spend out of what you have given to us, Ya Allah, so that you could love us, Ya Allah, and so that we can get the barakah of spreading the deen for Sabinullah, inshallah. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fi akhirati hasanata wa qina adabana. Inna Allahumma laikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى ال محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكتك المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله ان الله يعمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله تعالى اعلى واولى وعز وجل Come on, Akbar Allah, Akbar to us. Allah.